Hello, I am Pastor Jennifer. Christmas has already passed. Should we then celebrate the birth of Jesus after one year? No, every day should be Christmas. For Christians, Christmas is the most important significant festival, along with Easter. For the Jews though, the biggest festival is the Passover that begins on the evening of the 14th of Nisan, the first month of the Jewish year. This month falls on March or April of the Gregorian calendar that we Koreans follow. Christmas and the Passover. These two festivals are not irrelevant because there is a common background of God's saving grace. And the reason why every day should be Christmas is that we need to remember this grace of salvation always. Let us get some insight by looking into the festival of the Passover. In time of Jacob, Israel came into Egypt due to a severe famine and sojourned there in the land of Ham. However, God was with them. He caused them to be very fruitful and made them stronger than Egyptians, their adversaries. Then the adversaries started to hate the sons of Israel, their slaves, and deal with them craftily. The sons of Israel sighed because of the bondage, and they cried out, and their cry rose up to God, and God remembered Zakar in Hebrew. Exodus 2, 24-25 So God heard their groaning. And God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God saw the sons of Israel, and God took notice of them. The covenant with Abraham here is the covenant that God made with Abraham when he was 99 years old. He promised to make him the father of a multitude of nations. He also said, I will give you and your descendants the land in which you dwell, the entire land of Cana, to be an eternal inheritance, and I will be their God. Psalm 105 describes the God of the covenant this way. He has remembered his covenant forever, the word which he commanded for thousand generations, the covenant which he made with Abraham, and his oath to Isaac. Then he confirmed it to Jacob for a statute, to Israel as an everlasting covenant. This God now works to save his people from the slavery. He sends Moses and Aaron to Egypt as saviors, and through them he commands Pharaoh, king of Egypt, to send his people out of Egypt. However, Pharaoh stands against God and ignores his command. Then God judges the land of Egypt by turning water to blood and sending frogs, gnats, flies, pestilence on livestock, oils, hail, locusts, and darkness one after another. And as Pharaoh remains stubborn, God finally sends the tenth plague upon the land. That is, he struck all firstborns who were most cherished in every family. Psalm 105, 36 says, He also struck down all the firstborn in their land, the first fruits of all their vigor. As Romans 6, 23 says, The wages of sin is death, and it was realized through the tenth plague. God let his people Israel survive this plague, and this was the way out for them. Exodus 12, 5 to 7. Your lamb shall be an unblemished male, O your old. You may take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the fourteenth day of the same month. Then the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel is to kill it at twilight. Moreover, they shall take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. Exodus 12, 13 The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live. 
And when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague will befall you to destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. The name Passover was derived from the Hebrew word Pasach, meaning to pass over or to spring over. And covered by this marvelous grace, and experiencing more later, Israel safely escaped from the land. It happened at the end of 430 years that the sons of Israel lived in the land. One thing noteworthy is that before the tenth plague and the exodus, God already gave Israel instructions for some feasts. Firstly, God commanded them to make the month of the exodus the first month of the year and celebrate the feast of the Passover on the 14th of the same month throughout their generations as a permanent ordinance. Second, he commanded them to observe the Feast of Unleavened Bread for seven days following the Passover, eating unleavened bread, which they were told to eat at the time of the Exodus. In short, he commanded them to remember. For them, remembering also meant life because God said to them, Whoever eats anything leavened from the first day until the seventh day, that person shall be cut off from Israel. That seriously, God wanted them to remember him and his work of salvation. Thanks to that, the combined feast of Passover and unleavened bread remains the biggest feast in Israel, not only in the OT, and anti times, but also today. In fact, having to remember God's saving grace is not their thing alone. It applies to us Christians who celebrate Christmas as well. God sure wants us to remember to rejoice over the birth of His Son because He came as our Savior. The birth of Jesus is the proof of God's saving grace. In other words, God's saving grace was revealed through Jesus the Savior, who was born to the world. We can say that his birth was the first visible stage of God's saving grace, because only he would be able to give us sinners eternal life, the free gift of God. The rest, such as the cross and the resurrection, was to follow the birth. And anyone who put his faith in him would be set free from all his sins and receive eternal life. Therefore, just as it was not enough in God's eyes for the Jews to celebrate the Passover just for one day, nor will it be enough for us to celebrate Christmas just one day. Another reason is that Jesus the Savior's sacrifice and his gift were incomparably greater than those of Moses and Aaron, the human saviors. So, every day should be Christmas. The key to the everyday Christmas is anamnesis, that is, memory, that God also regarded as important. what best to help us with the task of remembering is the scripture. Let me share now Bible quotes on memory. For Christmas-related scriptures, please refer to the previous Christmas special videos. Thank you. First, God remembers. Genesis 8, 1-2 But God remembered Noah and all the beasts and all the cattle they were with him in the ark, and God caused the wind to pass over the earth, and the water subsided. Also, the fountains of the deep and the floodgates of the sky were closed, and the rain from the sky was restrained. Genesis 9, 15-16 And I will remember my covenant, which is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh, and never again shall the water become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bull is in the cloud, 
then I will look upon it to remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. Leviticus 26, 45 But I will remember for them the covenant with their ancestor, whom I brought out of the land of Egypt, in the sight of the nations, that I might be their God. I am the Lord. Second, things for us to remember, the Lord our God, the Creator. Exodus 3.15 God furthermore said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the sons of Israel, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this is my memorial name to all generations. Ecclesiastes 12, 1-2 Remember also your Creator in the days of your youth, before the evil days come, and the years draw near when you will say, I have no delight in them. Before the sun and the light, the moon and the stars are darkened, and clouds return after the rain. The salvation and grace of God. Deuteronomy 5.15 You shall remember that you are a slave in the land of Egypt, and the Lord your God brought you out of there by a mighty hand and by an outstretched arm. Therefore, the Lord your God commanded you to observe the Sabbath day. Deuteronomy 16.12 You shall remember that you are a slave in Egypt, and you shall be careful to observe these statutes. Deuteronomy 8, 18 But you shall remember the Lord your God, for it is He who is giving you power to make the earth, that He may confirm His covenant, which He swore to your fathers, as it is this day. Job 36, 24 Remember that you should exalt His work, of whom men have sung. Isaiah 46, 8-9 Remember this, and be assured, recall it to mind, you transgressors. Remember the former things long past, for I am God, and there is no other. I am God, and there is no one like me. Jeremiah 51, 50 You who have escaped the sword, depart, do not stay. Remember the Lord from afar and let Jerusalem come to your mind. Days like wilderness, Exodus 23, 9 You shall not oppress a stranger, since you yourselves know the feelings of a stranger, for you also were strangers in the land of Egypt. Deuteronomy 8, 2 You shall remember all the way which the Lord your God has led you in the wilderness these forty years that it might humble you, testing you, to know what was in your heart, whether you would keep His commandments or not. The Commandments of the Lord your God Deuteronomy 6, 4-9 Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today, shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your sons, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house, and on your gates that Jesus was born to the world, Zechariah's hymn of praise. Look, 117-73 As he spoke by the mouth of his holy prophets from of old, salvation from our enemies and from the hand of all who hate us, to show mercy toward our fathers and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he swore to Abraham, our father, Mary's song of praise, Luke 
went fifty-four to fifty-five. He has given help to Israel, his servant, in remembrance of his mercy, as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham and his descendants forever, that Jesus died in all sinners' place. Luke twenty-two nineteen to twenty. And when he had taken some bread and given thanks, he broke it and gave it to them, saying, "This is my body." Which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after they had eaten, saying, "This cup, which is poured out for you, is the new covenant in my blood." That Jesus was resurrected. Luke twenty-four six to nine. He is not here, but he has risen. Remember. How he spoke to you while he was still in Galilee, saying that the Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified, and the third day rise again. And they remembered his words and returned from the tomb and reported all these things to the eleven and to all the rest. What you have received and heard, Revelation three. So remember what you have received and heard, and keep it, and repent. Therefore, if you do not wake up, I will come like a thief, and you will not know at what hour I will come to you. Acts twenty thirty one. Therefore, be on the alert, remembering that night and day for a period of three years. I did not cease to admonish each one with tears. With these, Jesus told us to remember. Matthew twenty-six thirteen. Jesus said concerning a woman who poured very costly perfume on his head. Truly, I say to you, whatever in this gospel is preached in the whole world, what this woman has done, it also be spoken of in memory of her. Third, when we fail to remember, Matthew sixteen nine to ten. Do you not yet understand or remember the five loaves of the five thousand and how many baskets full you picked up, or the seven loaves of the four thousand and how many large baskets full you picked up? Mark eight eighteen. Having eyes, do you not see, and having ears, do you not hear? And do you not remember? Four, Jesus considered this when he was with his disciples. John sixteen one to four. These things I have spoken to you, so that you may be kept from stumbling. They will make you outcasts from the synagogue. But an hour is coming for everyone who kills you to think that he is offering service to God. These things they will do, because they have not known the Father or me. But these things I have spoken to you, so that when their hour comes, you may remember that I told you of them. These things I did not say to you at the beginning, because I was with you, leaving his disciples. John fourteen sixteen twenty five to twenty six. I will ask the Father. And he will give you another helper, that he may be with you forever. These things I have spoken to you while abiding with you. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all that I said to you. Fifth, benefits of remembering God, God's righteousness. Psalm one hundred three, seventeen to eighteen. But the loving kindness of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear Him, and His righteousness to children's children, to those who keep His covenant and to remember His precepts to do them. Life remembering is the living's right and duty. Psalm six five, ESV. For in death. There is no remembrance of you, 
angel will give you praise. God's blessing. Exodus 20:24. 20, you shall make an altar of earth for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen. In every place where I cause my name to be remembered, I will come to you and bless you. Good deeds that follows naturally. Act 20, 35. In everything I showed you that by working hard in this manner, you must help the weak and to remember the words of the Lord Jesus that himself said, It is more blessed to give than to receive. Hebrews 13, 1 2. Let love of the brethren continue. Do not forget to show hospitality to strangers, for by this some have entertained angels without knowing it. Hope. Lamentations 3 19 22. Remember my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and bitterness. Surely my soul remembers his bow down within me. This I recall to my mind. Therefore, I have hope the Lord's loving kindnesses indeed never cease, or his compassions never fail. Evangelism that follows naturally. 1 Corinthians 11 23 26. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup or so after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink the cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lastly, God is worthy of these confessions. Psalm 135.13 Your name, O Lord, is everlasting. Your remembrance, O Lord, throughout all generations. Psalm 119.52-56 I have remembered your ordinances from of old, O Lord, and comfort myself. Burning indignations that seized me because of the wicked who forsake the law. Your statutes are my songs. In the house of my pilgrimage, O Lord, I remember your name in the night and keep your law. This has become mine, that I observe your precepts. This is all for today. Beloved in Jesus our Lord, I pray that we will celebrate Christmas every day, meditating daily on scriptures on God's saving grace, especially the significance of the birth of Jesus Christ. There is essential to the fulfillment of the salvation. If you need help with the Christmas-related scriptures, I recommend that you listen to all Bible quotes included in my Christmas specials 1-6 to and meditate upon them over and over. I trust that you will enjoy a lot of spiritual benefits through the year-long journey till next Christmas. Big thanks for watching. Please stay strong, both in spirit and in body. Until next time. Everyday Christmas!